Greetings. This is TK Trav, aka Travis Mages, here with LVX777. Today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the science of adjusting the subconscious mind, as usual. But we're going to hone in on those three main points that you'll hear me talk about constantly, which is the subconscious mind is impacted by repetition, symbols, and trauma. Okay, now that's something that I picked up from listening to Brother Panic. That's something that he used to always say, and I find that to be true in my study and in my practice. Why do we even care about the subconscious mind? Okay, well, let's say this is your first time watching one of my videos. Basically, from what I've found is that the subconscious mind is the generator of our reality. Our whole world is built upon our perception of the world. And our perception of the world is based on what our five senses pick up on a daily basis, starting from when we were born all the way up to now. So what we see, taste, touch, smell, feel, all those things build a library and a catalog in the back of our mind and it's stored away in our subconscious mind. So every experience that we have is categorized and it's just like a computer, just like files, they all have tags, right? Just like YouTube, when you make a video, you've got to put tags on it so that it can be properly sorted. And when someone goes to search for something, it pulls it up in relation to the tags. So when you have an experience that is negative, that's painful, that causes you negative emotions or physical pain, your subconscious mind tags that experience as bad, right? Because at the very end of the day, in the deepest part of your subconscious mind, in your reptilian brain, you've got two files, two baskets, right? One is good and one is bad. One is pleasure, one is pain. Now there's a whole bunch of subcategories, submodalities, and everything like that, but at the end of the day, it's ultimately good and bad. The work that we want to do here of releasing the chains of mind control is us being not so quick to throw things into those two buckets. To start to build a third bucket, which is unattached, undifferentiated. Okay, we'll get there in a second. But your subconscious mind has those two buckets, good and bad. So say, for example, you know, you have some food that a friend has cooked, they let you try something you've never tried before looks good, but say the baby is in the living room getting its diaper changed and now you're smelling the poop and that's giving you a negative association. So before you even try the food, it's already biased. You know, it has a propensity to be put in that bad category, right? Before you even try it, you're preconditioning yourself. But anyways, little things like that put tags on all of our experiences. So sometimes we unfairly tag certain experiences. A large part of the science is actually taking the time to observe how you feel in every situation. This is called awareness. This is called being here now. Nowness, right? You want to be aware of how you're feeling. You want to be aware of your experience right now. And you want to be aware of what tags you're subconsciously putting on your world. Because this has to do with how you're feeling. It has to do with your emotions. Some people that are still fighting depression, they just can't figure out how to get out of it. They can't fight this funk that they're in. Sometimes they don't know what triggers it, right? People who are bipolar, they don't know what triggers it. People with ADHD and all these type of psychological symptoms, they're triggered, right? But it all has to do with the subconscious mind. It all has to do with what category you're putting experiences into. Now, that being said, the subconscious mind generates your reality because everything that you do what happens is you take in that data and this is all happening in milliseconds, you know, quantum nanoseconds. You take the experience that you're having right now and you pull your, from your subconscious mind similar experiences, right? And your brain does a split test. It compares the data from your current experience to your past experience and it go, goes ahead and tries to make a prediction of what may or may not happen. And this is what gives most people their attitude, their opinions, their, what's going to determine how they're going to act. So you can break this down scientifically 
we're our, we're something like an animal mixed with a computer, right? And I honestly think those of us who don't take the effort to try to control the animal nature or try to control the computer nature are really nothing more but just those things, automatons. Because it takes that extra special piece of spirit, piece of soul, to ask the question, why? Why do I behave like this? Why do I act like this? You know, I don't like this. Maybe I should try to change it. I do like this. How can I get more of it? You know, little questions like that are the seed of growth, the seed of evolution, the seed of change. Because if you're not asking these questions, you're literally just going with the motions. You're letting the program play you, right? Because like I've said in previous videos, based on the hermetic philosophy, there's three worlds. There's the physical world, there is the world of force, which is also emotion and astral and spirit, and then there is the world of the mental plane. Okay, these three worlds are stacked on top of each other. And we exist in all three of these worlds simultaneously. Our physical body lives in the physical world. Our emotional body, our spiritual body lives in that astral world, that energetic world, the world of force. And our mental plane, our mind, right, that which is the observer, excuse me, not the observer, the thinker, right, the decider of decisions, exists on that top of the pyramid. Now there's a fourth level, and this is where the soul resides, and the soul is actually the observer. So again, I want to bring to your attention why it's important to exist in the now to be aware of your present surroundings because when you put yourself right here right now the observer is now taking part in the game the observer is now playing the game as opposed to the game playing you now what do i mean by the game playing you i mean the physical body being pushed by its impulses making decisions based off of the five senses the body is not the decision maker this is like letting your child decide what you're going to buy and what you're going to eat every single day. Letting your child run the household is the same thing as letting your body run your life. Because your body isn't thinking in advance. It's not thinking about the outcome. It's simply going based off of its little portion in the subconscious mind of the good and the bad bucket, right? Oh, this feels bad, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, I'm bored, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, this feels good, let's do this all the time. It's like an animal, right? Let's overeat. Let's have sex or masturbate all day. Let's play video games all day. Let's just sit down and watch TV. Let's just do what feels good to the body. That's the body controlling you. Now the body is controlled by the emotional body or the body of force or the body of spirit. So at least if you're here, you're not letting your body control you. Now the body of the emotion is controlled by how it's feeling. Believe it or not, some people are addicted to pain. Some people are addicted to being depressed. Some people are addicted to misery. Some people are addicted to gossip and complaining and those things. Their emotional body loves it. So they're constantly finding ways to be kept in that scenario of complaining or being hurt or being depressed or what have you. That emotional body is gonna satisfy itself. Now sometimes the body may disagree because it feels bad. It's like, hey, why are you always doing this? Because it makes us feel bad. The mind of the body is the emotions. And again, if these two don't agree, you're gonna have conflict. Now all, likewise, there are pleasurable feelings. There are feelings of love. There are some people who are addicted to being in love, right? There are pleasurable feelings that are gained from eating food, right? So now your body's addicted to the food because you're getting a emotional high. Right? Some people like watching these type of videos and researching the occult and the dark side and spirituality because it gives them a little bit of a spook, right? It gives them a little bit of a ooh, chill. They're emotionally addicted to that, right? And then there's some people who get an emotional high from learning something new every day, right? It, it makes them feel part of this world. It makes them feel alive. It makes them feel like they have a purpose and they're do it, that they're doing something important. This is feeding the emotional body. Now, the mental body, the mind, is in control of the emotions and the body. It's like a pyramid. So the mental body, being ruled by it, is being ruled by decision making. You're constantly thinking and pondering over a situation. Now that can either go as being indecisive or too quickly decisive. Like, for example, when you're doing shadow work or when you're doing healing of yourself in your subconscious mind, 
one of the core things to do is to find the root of the problem. Some people don't want to do the work, so they jump to the first conclusion they see. That is a, that is a mind that is quick to decide, right? Instead of taking the time to feel the feelings that you've gone through and go back through those experiences to heal yourself, your mind jumps to the first conclusion so you can go ahead and get it over with and get to the next decision. Patience is necessary. Peace is necessary. Nowness is necessary. Because when you exist in the now, when you can say, I am, now you can clearly see if you're doing shadow work, if you're doing work to heal past trauma, you got to exist in a peaceful, calm state so you can see clearly, so you can let the scenario play out. And then you can decide with clarity what the problem is that is making you overeat, that is making you addicted to video games, that is making you addicted to falling in love with the wrong people, right? Every problem, every issue, every behavior that we have is rooted in a cause. And that cause is rooted in the subconscious mind. So the subconscious mind is the generator of reality. Because everything you do puts a tag on your experience. And when you're having a new experience, your brain goes back into its database of tags and pulls up what it has experienced. For example, if a friend asks me if I want to go skydiving, first thing I'm going to do is think about that question. And immediately, I'm going through the tags in my own personal Google library, and I'm searching up skydiving. I'm also searching up experiences with that person, right? We may have had some shitty experiences in the past. He may be a liar. He may be full of ego, annoying as hell. And I might look at those tags and make a decision based on that. But if I go back and look up skydiving, say I've never been, now I'm going to look up tags of when I've seen it happen. What do I know about skydiving? And I'm going to pull up all that data, and I'm going to scan through it. You know, probably the emotional body is going to scan through it. How did I feel when I did those things in the past? And then the mental mind is going to make a decision based on what we've come up with in the search results. If there's insufficient data, depending on the type of person you are, maybe you're going to now base the decision on your experiences with this guy. Well, I like this guy, so it should be fun. If there's insufficient data, then you search for something else to make a decision on, because the mental body has to make the decision. <sighs> We're getting really close, guys. Really close. Some things cannot be spoken about too soon. But back to the original subject. Um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. He's actually been rocking with me on this YouTube channel from day one. Shout out to Gizcard Camille. Appreciate you, bro. He sent a question this morning, and it was asking pretty much, you and Brother Panic mentioned trauma, repetition, and symbols are ways to reprogram the subconscious mind. It seems to me at times like, it seems to me at times like trauma is the most effective or impressionable method at times. Example, losing weight for health reasons versus telling yourself you lost weight and holding a picture of your ideal weight in your mind, etc. So my question is, in that case, what is a really good strategy to make repetition and symbols more impactful than trauma to the subconscious mind? I think that's a pretty good question. Um, to me, I would always say, let's go back and find the root. Find the root cause. Um, if the example is weight loss, is it because you feel like you are overweight, right? Do you feel like you're fat when you look in the mirror? Is that what you see? Because I've seen this a lot with females. They look in the mirror, and what they see isn't always congruent with how they actually are. But then again, it's my perspective, my opinion. But if you find the root cause, then you can solve the problem. So let's say, for example, the person is overweight, and they want to change their life with repetition and with patterns, with symbols. What they would do is they would go back into their subconscious mind and they would do the work, they would meditate, they would try to find out psychologically what is causing them to overeat. What is causing them to overeat? Is it an emotional thing? 
right? Do they feel good when they eat? Is it, uh, what's the word? Is it a cushion? Is it a comfort? Is it a crutch? Like I said, they had a bad day at work, so now they come home and they eat that big bucket of ice cream or they order that pizza. You know, is it that their body's in control? Whenever they pass by a vending machine, they have to get the Reese's Pieces or the Snickers or the M&M's or the honey bun with that extra icing on it. What is the cause? When you go back into the cause and figure out what happened to you when you were young to cause you to be this way, what was the first thing that you can remember? The first time you can remember having this feeling of being fat or being overweight or being ugly. When was the first time you felt that way? Go back into the subconscious mind, search that tag, right? Find that first experience or early experiences, right? If it was traumatic, it probably only took one time. If it was repetition, look at when these things were happening. Was somebody constantly calling you fat, constantly calling you ugly? Were you constantly seeing symbols of skinny people or fit people and having this feeling like, man, I wish I was like that. I wish I was one of them. You see how this is beginning to work? You go back into your database and you find the root cause of this problem. Now that you've identified the root cause, let's say your mother always called you fat. Let's say also every time you pass a vending machine, you're in, okay, your mother always calling you fat. That's your emotional body being traumatized. Let's say you always pass by the vending machine and you have to get the M&Ms. That's your body, right? That's your body in control. Now let's say on TV you're constantly seeing skinny women, or what you would consider skinny women, and you in magazines, and you just feel so bad because you're not looking like them. All right. Again, that's emotion, and that's repetition, and that's symbology. So what you would do, we'll start with that last one. You know for a fact you're going to see the TV. You know you're going to see these magazines. So if you can't avoid them, what you can change is you and your perspective. You can see them and you can start to realize and say to yourself repetitiously, I am beautiful. I am enough. I don't have to look like them. Who said that I had to look like them? Everybody is different. Everybody is built differently. Everybody has different genetics. We're not all supposed to be super skinny or super fit or whatever. Everybody's body is different. So you got to come to accept who you are and why you are that way. You got to come to accept it. You were made in a divine image. If you didn't know that, I'm telling you that now. All right, so that's the sim that's the mental one. As far as the candy passing by the vending machines or passing by that little uh, money trap right before the checkout, you know, where they have all the little snacks and sweets and everything lined up for you to buy as you're pulling out your wallet. Um, practice some discipline. Understand, you know, make it make it a game, right? Say you've got something sweet at home. Right? Or maybe even buy something for yourself because you want to kind of lean off of it. Reward yourself every time you're able to overcome. Right, When you're standing in that checkout line and you're passing that vending machine and you see the sweets, first of all, don't stand there and fantasize and say, oh, I got to have it. Practice discipline. Turn away from it. Don't look at it. Keep it moving. Make it a point to ignore it. And then when you do that, pat yourself on the back. Find a different way to reward yourself right? Do something fun online or buy something for yourself. Spend that money you would have spent on those sweets and those snacks on something beneficial to you. Like I say, make it a game. Go a week without buying any of those sweets or snacks from the vending machine and then take that money you would have spent, you know, accumulate it, say it was about 10 bucks and go treat yourself, you know, I'm saying at a restaurant or go buy a nice shirt or something. You can figure out what you like. But Make it a point to practice discipline and reward yourself afterwards. You can't just stop something cold turkey and expect to be super successful. You always want to replace it with something else. So if you're replacing those vending machine snacks, maybe buy a game or a toy or something. Everybody likes something. If you like unicorns, go buy a nice unicorn keychain. Now as far as your mother telling you constantly that you're fat through your childhood, now that's going to take more work because that's going to take sitting down and doing the shadow work. You're going to have to go back and experience those feelings again. And you're going to have to ask the question, why do I feel sad about this? Because that's a whole different person. Okay, first of all, you got to go into the heart chakra and you got to forgive her. You got to forgive her because 
she is an adult living her own life, going through her own problems, and who knows what was going on in her life to make her lash out at you that way. Maybe she didn't understand what she was doing. She is just human after all. Maybe she has mental issues and not understanding that it's not healthy to take them out on their child. Work on forgiving them. Work on letting them go. If you need help with this, I actually did a great video on forgiveness with the angel Anuel. I'm going to put that link below, so be sure to look for it. Um, I'll also make a comment with the link on it and pin it to the top. That way it'll be easy for you to find the video on forgiveness. I've also got a video on, um, you know, giving up addictions and that type of thing. So I'll link that also. And then I've got a third video that I just did probably two or three videos back about how to go back and change some of these negative thought patterns, some of these negative experiences. So I'll link those three in the pinned comment below and I'll put them in the description. But anyways, you want to forgive your mother because she was just human being human. You also have to forgive yourself for accepting those negative feelings that she was giving you. Forgive yourself because you also were human and you also didn't know. But now that you are an adult and that you are aware, you can release those feelings because what she said doesn't apply to you. That's her opinion. Opinion. Opinion is not a truth. It's not a fact. It's what somebody thinks that they know for sure, but you can't prove it. You form your own opinions about yourself. And from this day forward, you begin telling yourself that you are perfect, you are beautiful, you are enough, you are strong, you are confident, you are these positive things. You say them to yourself day after day repetitiously. You say them to yourself like a mantra, right? Write yourself little notes and put them on the walls, put them on a fridge so every time you pass by them, you subconsciously see it and keep it moving, right? See it, feel good, and keep it moving. What you're doing is you're programming yourself. You see that positive message, you smile, so now you're attaching a positive emotion to it, and then you let it go. You're putting a new tag in your subconscious mind. So you keep doing that. You keep telling yourself. I remember growing up, a lot of girls would feel, you know, from my experience, they would feel that if somebody complimented them or told them they were beautiful, they couldn't really accept it. And I never understood why. Well, I'm pretty sure a large reason of it is, is they don't believe it themselves. So for someone else to tell them that, it just doesn't work. So sometimes when you're watching these videos about motivation and things, it just doesn't stick because you don't believe it. You got to make yourself believe it. Now that example I just used is a great way to do it. Write a little note, which is a sigil, hello magic, write a little note to yourself, just a quick, you know, I am perfect, I am strong, I am divine, I am beautiful, whatever. Put it where you can see it, like put it on your bedroom door, so whenever you go to open the door, you know you're going to see it. But for the first few couple of times, see it and smile. Feel it, feel confident, feel powerful, feel beautiful, feel enough. Intensely feel it, and then let it go. Do this every day. Do this every hour. You're programming and charging a sigil. Now, when somebody tells you you're beautiful, not that you need someone to validate you, but when somebody tells you that, when somebody says you look good, you can believe it because you already know, because you told yourself that, because you convinced yourself that, because you did magic on yourself because magic is, in essence, controlling your subconscious mind, controlling the powers of the subconscious mind, controlling reality, manipulating reality through the power of will. This all connects. Magic is psychology. The subconscious mind is the generator of reality. So, that's enough for this video. So many more to come. Join the Mages Society on Facebook. It is free. It's a community where a lot of like-minded people who like to discuss these type of topics discuss these topics in the Facebook group. So join that. The link is in the bio. Also, I just opened the doors to the Magus Academy, which is our study group that we've got going on. All these books that I talk about in my videos, I find that some people don't have enough time to read. Some people don't have enough discipline to sit down and finish the book. Some people don't understand what's in the book. So, to help, what I have put together is a study group where we all get together and I read these books chapter by chapter. I don't read them and record them. That's your part. You read the books. But I record a synopsis of each chapter and I try to get about three to five every week 
and I post it on the website. And by the end of the week, we come together in a group discussion and we kind of talk about what we've learned. So what this does is it helps to give you a better understanding of the book because when I talk with other people about books, I get stuff that I didn't see. I pick up things that I didn't see the first time. And I go back and I look at the book and I'm like, hey, yeah, it says that. Cool. Also, it gives you a bit of uh, accountability to actually finish it. If you know that we're reading this book this month, you're going to do your best to kind of stay on top of it so you can participate. So I think this is a great idea. This isn't like any super secret knowledge cult or anything. This is just the book club. All we're doing is finishing these books, conversating about them, and getting as much info and light out of these books as possible. Right now we're doing The Caballion. Um, we are on about chapter three, I wanna say. After The Caballion, we're gonna do Basic Magic. And then after that, we're gonna do Libra Null and The Psychonaut. So if you are thinking about joining, go ahead and get these books and let's get started. Um, as I said previously, there's only 100 seats for the group chat program, so I'm going to be limiting it and closing the doors after 100 people sign up. So come on in, let's go ahead and get this thing started. In the future, we're going to open it up larger, but this is the first time I'm rolling this out, so I'm kind of working with a small group at first. Um, but yeah, the link is the first link you're going to see as soon as you scroll down. It's $33 a month. And of course, you can cancel at any time. Um, so yeah, those are the important things. Love yourself. Be good to yourself. Understand that you are God. You are divine. Your subconscious mind generates reality. Right? The all is within you as well. Drop of water is the same as the ocean. So treat yourself right. Because the universe is going to treat you how you treat yourself. The universe doesn't feel any kind of way about anything. It just responds to what you tell it to do. So, this is TK Trav, aka Travis Mages, here with LVX777. I love you. Peace.